So I've noticed this is my first drive with 11.3.2 here, and right off the bat, I've noticed some really goofy behavior. I have a feeling it's because people are parked on one side of the road due to um, the snow that we've gotten. It's been a mandate from the city, so the car almost wanted to bail out um, right off the bat coming out of my main street there on Fillmore Street, which is really interesting. So haven't seen that sort of behavior before on 11.3.1 have to keep an eye on it and see if it continues to do this sort of thing, but uh, I'm going to switch the nav here. We're trying to get it to do a different route here, and as you can see here, the the speed limit is still wrong in Minneapolis. Um, I don't expect that to get fixed until we see an update um, with the navigation data, but that requires a constant you know, adjustment as soon as I activate it in my neighborhood. The default speed limit around Minneapolis is 20 miles per hour, so... All right, so it's a right turn here and then an immediate left. And I will say FSD does not want to take this route. And I'm taking this route because of the potholes. And again, you can kind of see the speed jump up here. Definitely going to report that. Um, that continues to just be a problem in Minneapolis in general. So. Maybe a one second pause after the complete stop there before it proceeded. And that's been something that I noticed with 11.3.1 as well. So no change really to the stop behavior there at intersection so far that I can tell. And again, I'm gonna switch the nav here. A little bit of hesitancy here. All right, again, poor visibility from the snowbanks on our left and right. We got a car coming on our left here. We're going to either have to make a decision. Okay, not terrible there. It stopped right at the line of where I would have stopped there. Because of the cameras where they're at, the pillar cameras, I mean, that's the best we're going to get for now. But again, I didn't feel unsafe there at all. If it would have went another foot, I would have cut it off, but it didn't need to do that. So that was good there. All right, so we went around... 37th Avenue here, which is a straight shot for the most part. It's just filled with potholes, so try to save our wheels and tires this time around. One thing you've probably noticed so far throughout this drive, the auto wipers still look to be problematic here in 11.3.2. Not surprised, I didn't see anything in the release notes that mentioned it, but still hoping Tesla at least gets around to fixing that at some point. It continues to be a problem where it's just, it's more of an annoyance than anything, and obviously it will wear out wiper blades faster than they will otherwise get worn out, so. Hopefully the same team that fixed the uh, um, high beams, auto high beams, will address that at some point here soon. All right, so we are just getting on uh, I-35W South here. Um, 
There are some massive potholes up here. It looks like the city did kind of try to fix some of them here. So let's see. We avoided avoided the ones that remain, which is great. Great behavior there. It didn't slow down one bit than it, more than it had to. It took that entrance onto the on-ramp there, much like I would. So I'm giving it a little bit of throttle input here by just adjusting the speed, but good behavior again. Another big improvement that I've seen with 11.3.1 uh, over the 10 builds is it's much better at detecting the flashing yellow lights and not doing the choppy throttle brake inputs that we've been used to before. So honestly, I haven't seen it more than maybe once um, throughout all the drives I've done. So it looks like that behavior is still present. Uh, with 11.3.2, which is really good to see. But, you know, only other thing I'll call out there, uh, merge behavior on the freeway still, unfortunately, does not use this turn signal like we should be doing. So um, that looks to just be something that they left out for functionality in the initial V11 builds, but I really hope that they add that in a future minor release. Um, it's really just a safety thing, right? And following the law, of course, as well. But um, we seem to right now is the merge behavior. It's just kind of a minimum viable product in the sense that it's just going to follow the merge line and then that's where it kind of merges in with traffic so uh, it obviously will match speed as best it can but it's pretty primitive right now but overall the highway code is still much better than we were used to with navigate autopilot the legacy code that's been around for three plus years now so Another thing here, uh, the car will not use this entrance ramp to MN280, which we are going to have to eventually jump on here. It still prefers to stay to the left. This has been an issue that I've reported um, to Tesla maybe about 10 times or so. Um, it just comes down to the navigation data. I've actually fixed some of the data in OpenStreetMaps as well, but it still is not committed in the code yet. So the car likes to try to stay on 35 to the last second and then try to make you know two lane changes. We'll see if it can do it here. It's pretty tight. So this might be our first disengagement here if it can't get over soon enough. Let's see if it does it. It's going to make it, but barely. So navigate an autopilot, and I'm going to report that. Um, navigate an autopilot uh, would never make that. So I'd have to either trick the nav out to using that um, secondary entrance ramp there to 280, or um, we would miss our, miss our exit there, So um, or disengage, of course. So usually I wouldn't engage you know, autopilot previously until I got past that section because of that issue that's been there. So And it occurs any time we try to navigate from northeast Minneapolis to St. Paul, and I take that route. So um, it continues to be a problem, but again, um, because of the better auto lane change functionality in version 11, the car was able to get over just barely. But if there was any traffic to our right, we wouldn't have made that. So. All right, so now we're exiting uh, MN280 South here. Um, we're gonna be getting off here, I believe it's um, University up here. And again, just very consistent with what we've seen with 11.3.1. The deceleration profile from high speed to low speed, like when you exit a freeway, is so much more improved um, compared to what we saw in the version 10 builds. Um, I might have to disengage here due to potholes. We'll see. Our roads are absolutely at their worst right now in Minnesota here because of our winter that we've had. So there are some massive craters that we have to deal with. But so far, we've avoided them. And great job. It looks like, if anything, maybe 11.3.2 is even a bit more confident with throttle application around corners. It, it, was, it didn't let up one bit there on that corner. It kept the same speed that I would have kept if I was driving. So... Maybe they made it a little bit more um, aggressive around corners, which I'm honestly fine with because it's it would match my behavior exactly if I was driving. And then for what it's worth, you can still toggle the driver profiles FSD and then obviously turn off the speed-based lane changes with this minimal lane change option here. But I'm running the assertive profile right now and I continue to run that, um, which seems to be a good fit for me and kind of my preferences. So, All right, so we got one left turn here and then we are gonna be at our destination, so.
A little bit of cautious behavior here. Looks like we're stopping. I'm gonna let it figure itself out. And just as it's about to apply throttle input here, I was, you know, the car went there, so. A little choppy. I wonder if it was because of where the navigation route was taking us, so. It's very possible that that was causing it, so. Um, but we've reached our destination here. I'm just gonna pull into the parking lot. Um, but otherwise, um, a good, decent zero disengagement drive to start.